Hi everyone, Miss Chloe here, back to talk about even more muscles. Now, I promise I'm not gonna bore you. I know we've been talking about a lot of different kinds of muscles and you must be getting a tiny bit tired of it, but these ones, I think, are the ones you're gonna know the most about. So maybe it'll be a little more interesting to you. We'll find out. <laughs> what we're talking about today are skeletal muscles. And skeletal muscles are special, and we'll get to that in a little bit, but they're also the ones that you probably think of when you think about muscles. Now, they're called skeletal muscles because they're attached to your skeleton. So it's kind of a self-explanatory name, which is nice. Some things aren't named quite so simply. But we're gonna go ahead and take a look at why they might be called skeletal muscles and what that might look like inside of our body. And to learn about it, I have something that's gonna give us a hand. Ready? <laughs> I know, I know, it's a tacky joke, but I think it's really cool because right here we do have a nice model of what our hand might look like beneath our skin. Now it's got some pieces removed so that we can understand it a little bit better, but let me show you that on this hand we do have some muscle. Now the muscle parts are here in red, you might be wondering what about all this white stuff kind of looks like a string that's also on this hand and that's a great question give yourself a high five for answering a great question or asking a great question <laughs> so on this we've got our muscle but it's attached by these white things those are going to be our tendons a tendon is going to be what attaches the skeletal muscle that you know we're so familiar with to the bones the things that you know move and give us some structure your muscles actually don't attach to every single bone in your body. So think about your own hand and compare it to this one. You've got a thumb and your thumb, I'm willing to bet, is kinda got some squish to it. It's like big, it's chunky. But your fingers, like maybe your pointer finger, don't feel as squishy, you don't feel as large, they feel smaller. Look at our model. Now here on the thumb, you can see there's a good big chunk of muscle. Whereas on our pointer finger, there's just this stringy thing, I'll kind of tilt it so you can see, just this stringy thing that goes all the way up to the tip. Now I did say that some of the muscles are removed, uh, but in this case, we didn't take any away. When you think about moving your thumb, you've got a muscle that does that right around here. If you think about moving your pointer finger though, the muscle that's gonna be moving your finger is actually down here in your arm. So the muscle down here is gonna move a tendon that goes all the way up here, and that's how you're gonna be able to make that movement. Now, skeletal muscles are special and different because they're voluntary muscles. So you choose when you move those muscles. For example, think about waving hello to somebody, right? You decided to wave hello. Your arms didn't just randomly start waving uh, because then you'd be really confused and you would probably be worried, at least I would if I just was randomly going around waving to people that I didn't know, or even if it was people I didn't know. If we look at our hand again, you see that there's this other color I didn't mention. We've got some yellow things going on right here. The yellow stuff, that's gonna be our nerves. So your nerves, basically they carry messages around. So when you decide that you're gonna wave, or we'll wave with our skeleton hand. When you decide to wave, you decide that a message comes from your brain through your nerves, till they reach the muscle, and then your muscle gets the instruction to move. Whether that's a wave, a wiggle of the thumb, whatever it is. Then, the muscle sends a message that goes all the way back to the brain, basically saying, hey, we I did, did it, it. the did job's it. done. We did it. So, this is how we're able to do stuff even if we can't quite see what's going on. For example, I could close my eyes and I could still wave my hand, and I would know that I'm waving. Even though I can't see it, even though I can't hear it or anything else, I just know that I'm waving because I'm getting messages from those nerves that are down there in my hand. So pretty cool stuff and pretty special because it is a choice that we made. Our other muscles in our body are cardiac muscles and our smooth muscles. We don't choose to use those. They just happen. They go automatically for us. We don't have to worry about our brain sending a message to those muscles to like get going or do your job. They just know how to do it, which is pretty awesome. 
The other thing that's important about our skeleton, besides uh, giving our skeletal muscles something to attach to and move around, is they give our bodies structure. So to show that off, I wanna play a quick game with you. You don't need too many things. I'll just show you the things that I gathered to play. And if you don't have them at home, that's okay. I can talk about substitutions. First thing you're gonna want, and this might be the harder thing to find, you're gonna want some clay. If you don't have clay at home, like Play-Doh or anything like that, you can actually make homemade Play-Doh out of flour. And we'll be adding a little recipe for that to Mosh Connect so that if you don't have some dough at home, you would be able to make some of your own. The other thing I use for this game, go ahead and get a few toothpicks. You don't need a ton. Uh, I used probably like four when I was making my materials. And then the last thing you're gonna want is just a plain cup or glass or something that's kind of heavy, something that you could smush with. Basically, we just don't wanna be smushing with our hands. We wanna smush with something solid. So I picked a cup. Now you might be wondering what we're doing. I'm gonna give you a task. I would like you to use your clay to make a person and then make a second person. But on this second person, stick some toothpicks in for toothpick bones. Make sure you've got arm bones and leg bones at the least. If you wanna add other bones, make a full skeleton, be my guest. But you just at least get like four toothpicks in there just so we get some structure going on. Now, please don't laugh at my little people, okay? I am just a science person. I'm trying my best, I am not an artist. And if you're an artist, that's awesome. If you're not an artist like me, that's awesome too. All we need is two people or two vaguely people-shaped things. <laughs> one of your persons, this one right here for me, is a squishy person. Not a bone in sight. Your other person should have those bones. And what we're going to do, we're gonna squish them. We're gonna see who kind of holds up better, our squishy person or our bony body. So let me clear some room. You make your people, and then we're gonna get squishing. All right, everybody, so I've got my two people. I've made them. I've got my cup right here for smushing so that we don't accidentally get toothpicks in our hands. And then we are going to, well, we're just gonna do it. Everybody say goodbye to my squishy body. Here we go, three, two, one. Oh. So, my body looks pretty sad. The legs completely folded underneath and got really squished up. Which, but you know, I mean, if you wanted to live your life as a completely flat person, maybe that's the way to go. Maybe you shouldn't have any bones. Let's try our, our bony body. This one has our toothpick skeletons in there. If you weren't able to find toothpicks at home, um, good options are like the little floss picks that you use for flossing. Maybe you have some pasta like spaghetti that you could break into small pieces and use. Maybe you could find some sticks outside. Uh, lots of good options. You just want something thin and rigid to make nice little bones for your clay person. Here we go. We're gonna smush it. This one too. Here we go. Three, two. One. Okay. So I actually uh, ended up folding it <laughs> as well. Um, and the bones broke, which, you know, that is something that does happen to people. But this was a lot harder for me to smush. So we can see, even though both of our bodies ultimately smushed, uh, we can see that the one with the bones was more difficult. And kind of kept its shape a little bit better. So our bones give us some structure, which is nice and helpful. I'm sure that you appreciate having structure to your body. I know that I do. I think I barely kind of move around in a normal way as a regular skeleton person. I think it would be even worse off if I was just kind of like a blob of goo or something like that. It'd be really hard to do my job and hard to keep moving, which brings me to a challenge that I have for you. So in your Mosh Lab notebooks, uh, there is a place for you, 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 <laughs> to record what kind of muscle movements you've been up to lately. Maybe you're moving your arms around, maybe you're moving your legs around, maybe you're moving your whole body around. I don't care what it is, I just wanna know, are you moving or not? 
So we've got a little journal for you to kind of fill out as you go through your day. Mark down, you know, what kind of body parts you're moving, what you're doing with them, and then we can talk about them together. So keep those in mind and start thinking about what questions you have about moving your body and about muscles in general. Because if you keep your eyes peeled and you keep an eye on the Mosh Connect page, we are gonna be having a special Facebook Live with someone who's a bit of an expert in the way that our bodies move. So check that out. Check out Mosh Connect for all the rest of our great activities and we hope to see you soon. Mosh Connect relies on support from our community. If you like what you just saw, please consider donating at www.themosh.org and give us a like on social media at Mosh Jacks so you can stay connected.